Welcome to the Marilla End. Uh, my name is Mark Machado, and I'm joined by not only Sri Lanka's number one journalist, but also the BBC's Estelle Vazu Devon, who's hot for to the, out of the press box to have a chat with me about Sri Lanka's. We're going to talk about the World Cup campaign, but we'll talk about both their World Cup um, games. Uh, before we get started, of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button and that follow. You can, of course, feel free to leave us comments and likes. Tell us what we, what you think about Shrunk's performance thus far. And um, if you're listening to your podcast, hit, hit that follow and subscribe as well. T- a few more things you got to remind you about. First, if you haven't done so already, join that WhatsApp uh, channel. We can't see your number. You can't see our number, but we put updates in it quite regularly on the days that Shrunk could play and the times we just have a bit of fun when they're not playing as well and also sign up for the newsletter as well there's a brilliant piece um, every day when on, on when Sri Lanka played Estelle's writing pieces about what went wrong and what didn't go quite so wrong at this point um, and there's a brilliant piece coming out at some point in the next few days when Sri Lanka have a bit of a rest have a bit of a lull about committing medicine's batting uh, by Nick Brooks that you're going to absolutely love and you do not want to miss. And also, if you need a mortgage, Mike Ward Mortgages sort, can sort you out if you're looking for somewhere to buy in the UK, the UAE, or Saudi Arabia. Um, thank you for getting through all our housekeeping bits, Estelle. Um, two games in, two losses. It's not been a great tournament thus far for Sri Lanka, has it? No, it hasn't. And I think the worst thing is the way the games have gone. I don't think it's been pretty viewing, right? Because um, some low scores, I'm sorry, my alarm is ringing. That's Uh, right. It's probably someone from the BBC trying to get you back on. (laughs) Um, I think it's not been pretty viewing, has it? Like, and part of that is, or I mean, I would say 70% of that is the conditions. It hasn't been great. We've discussed this before as well when, when the men played in New York where, you know, low-scoring games are fun to watch and, you know, they can be great for the game. But you can't have a difficult pitch and then huge boundaries and a bad outfield. That just does not work. Particularly when you have so few teams that can really clear the boundaries. Uh, I think in the first game, the straight boundary was like 70 plus meters, right? And I don't think there's anyone in the Sri Lankan side apart from Chamari who can who can clear that sort of distance. So that really, I think, hits the entertainment factor. And like, if you're watching this and you're thinking that I'm saying that because Sri Lanka has lost, I just think if you look, Across the board in Sharjah, anyone who's watched any of those games, they haven't really been fun to watch. Even, I mean, if you're an Australian fan, that was that didn't look like a convincing performance. If you're an England fl- fan and you watch the Bangladesh-England game, you would think it's not a convincing performance. But in those conditions, that's kind of like the best you can get. Like Australia and England are the two favorites or are two of the three favorites for the tournament, right? And if they are struggling in conditions like that, um, it. I mean, I don't. I don't want to be overly critical, but you have to question whether you want that sort of thing happening in in a major tournament like this. Yeah, I, 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 I think I agree with you. There's a lot to unpack there. We should also point out. I mean, this is a Sri Lankan cricket podcast for Sri Lanka fans. Um, it's so it's okay, Estelle, to bring your slight bias into it. You can't, <laughs> Like that, that's fine. I mean, I, I see 95% of people listen to the show want Sri Lanka to win cricket games, right? There's a, right, let's let's start off at the top, let's start off at the conditions situation. When I was watching the, the game today against Australia, and I saw that that incredibly slow start, I mean, what was it, first 10 balls without uh, without a, a run, uh, Vishmi having what felt like breaking all sorts of records, getting out for a duck after facing 10 balls in the T20 game, which is quite something. The back end of the Pakistan game, I think we've gone over 10 overs. We've got was it 72 or 73 balls without a boundary. Did we score, did we only, was it only three or four boundaries today in the whole innings? In the previous uh, game, it was three, I think. Uh, yeah. Let me just check today. I mean, we're really, you, you know, you mentioned it already, Charm, apart from Charmory, who has not been able to get going, we'll talk about that in a bit, um, we're really struggling to find the boundary here. Um, 
we know because they've won the Asia Cup only a few a few weeks ago, not that long ago. We know this team can play. We know they can play with the big, uh, the biggest sides in the tournament. Um, is this? Is there been a slight failing of the preparations and not really understanding the conditions that we're gonna gonna be facing? I mean, of course, the the opposition have to have to play that, and you know, other teams have to play in these conditions as well. But for two games, just not to put performance in, what is? It feels to me like there could be an issue somewhere along the line, or someone's not done the homework, or someone's kind of not prepared them in quite the right manner that, that that they they should be in. Also, when you look at, you brought up New York as well, we can look at that game against Namibia in Australia and look at the sluggishness of the men at the, the 50 over World Cup last year. Is there a slight issue with the way major shrunker teams are prepared for major international tournaments? Or am I trying to look for a pattern that's not there? I mean, what is going on here, Estelle? Yeah, it's an interesting question because... One thing that struck me at yesterday's pre-match um, press conference with Chamari was that she did say they were expecting faster and more batting-friendly conditions in Sharjah, which I feel is interesting because you know that they, I mean, Dubai and Sharjah were announced as the venues only like a month before the tournament, right? So they haven't had time to prepare much, uh, and it's extremely hot. Uh, and they've had a lot of cricket going on here as well. So I don't know whether that there's a fault in kind of assuming that it'll be good betting conditions. Um, and she's repeatedly said that the players have not adapted. And I think as much as we love the Sri Lankan team and the Sri Lankan batters, you have to admit that there's a skill issue involved here where maybe they don't have the game to kind of adapt to conditions that aren't good for batting. You, you saw how, how confident they were in Dabula during the Asia Cup in South Africa. Um, even against Ireland, I know we, we lost that series, but the batting was not terrible, right? But here, having to adapt quickly, they've really struggled. And I wonder if there is a, there is a skill issue there where they aren't certain how they're supposed to get runs when, when, when boundary hitting is not an option. Sri Lanka has, I mean, apart from that Asia Cup, right, Sri Lanka hasn't been like a big boundary hitting team. It's It's yeah. been Chamari Atapattu and maybe on and off Kavisha or um, Harshita, right? But apart from that, like they do struggle to clear the boundary. Um, but I don't know whether it's a preparation thing where you, you expect pitchers to be like that. And I think as fans also, when we talk about even the men's game, when we talk about where the game is going and all those things, we always talk about, you know, at major tournaments, you're going to get batting friendly conditions and you're going to need to be scoring 180, 190 um, in a T20 game. But if you look at the men's World Cup and now this, that's not the case, right? Like in both occasions, you've got like really tough batting conditions and I don't know whether Dubai, I, I know we saw 160 plus from uh, New Zealand yesterday and we saw South Africa, you know, chasing down West Indies target with 10 wickets in hand. But I'm not sure whether that pit, those pitches are 180 plus pitches either, right? Um, and I think a surefire sign of, you know, identifying that they aren't conducive to, you know, free flowing batting is the way Australia batted. They didn't have it easier either. And they batted until number nine, number 10, right? So they have the depth where, you know, the top order can really go after the bowling um, because they have that, you know, proper batting until number nine. But they they weren't able to get going either. So it's, it's difficult for me to say whether it's a skill issue or whether it's just purely the conditions. But whatever it is, and Atapatu said this as well, like, you can't make an excuse, right? Every team's going to be playing in those conditions and you have to adapt. You're playing international cricket. You can't, I guess, in the first game, maybe it caught you by surprise. I, I don't think it should have because they watched the first game as well. But um, they haven't adapted quickly enough. And even if I think the, the, the plans are clear, like working the singles or going after the bowling in the power play, they haven't been able to execute. And I think... 
like you spoke about the star chamari and wish me god chamari at the at the post match interview today sorry the press conference was like you know on these tracks you need to be getting 45 plus runs in the power play so that you can push towards 120 but did it look like they were trying to get 45 runs in that power play i was very confused with that approach yeah i i mean i don't know this is that to um, against pakistan i think we could kind of say we we kind of misread it and had a bad day and pakistan kind of had a, a big day yeah. out right um today against australia for the first time in a really long time it felt like shrug were just australia were just leagues above us at points in that game right um which I mean, it's a real shame because actually, I don't think the gap is as big as it as it looked today. Um, I mean, some people, I know J- Jared Kimber, a friend friend of the Murley uh, Murley end, w- will tell you that, or you know, in his opinion and his you know learned opinion, is that the Australian women's cricket team and the program that they are under and have had in place for a number for quite a while in Australia has been, you know, makes them one of the most efficient professional sports sides ever produced in, in, on the planet, right? And you could definitely, it did kind of feel like that at moments today, but also it kind of like just, we just out, outplayed in every way, right? Because normally what should happen is you come on and we could we could do this in the Pakistan game. You go, well, if it was for, if Fatima Sada didn't have such a good day, SL could have won. If that yeah. ball, you know, for that particular play that would happen, or that over of that period of the game, we could find the boundary there, then we could have gotten over, uh, got a few more runs and, and, and defended that a lot easier. With that Australia game, though, almost from the get-go, with Charmy and Vish, we've not been able to get any any runs. I mean, we were just so far off it. It, it reminded me of the days kind of going into COVID with the women's side, where we were just really uncompetitive and then coming back out of it. Do you remember that? I think one of the early things we did when the women's team was restarted was we had a, a series in Pakistan, mm. uh, a white ball series. And some of those games, we were absolutely terrible, just nowhere near... Uh, the levels that we should be at. And today reminded me of that again. And I thought Sri Lanka were kind of past that. Um, and it's it's quite disappointing. I want to talk about boundaries, right? Because I don't think it's a... It, I, to, to a degree, it's a technique issue for, for some of the players. But I wonder if... So with... If, if you haven't been to, uh, to to a lot of women's cricket, you might not know this, but in some stadiums around the world, depending where they play, they move the boundary rope in. So when uh, when you, uh, in the, at the beginning of the 100, I went to quite a few games in that first season of the 100, the boundary rope for the women's game was actually quite far in uh, because they wanted it to be a high scoring tournament. They wanted uh, boundaries to, to come quite easily and quickly. Um I wanted to get your take because I don't think anyone in the world would have been to as many uh, women's games as you for the shrunker side of, as you have, Estelle. Is do you think the where where the band rope is is at the moment is either too far away, or is there the other kind of adverse issue? Could it be that when they've been playing in Dublin, when they've been playing at home, the band rope's been too too close in and made it kind of almost papered over a, a, a issue with kind of technique and power hitting well it's like this right it's we cricket is about entertainment now right i mean it's always been about entertainment but like boundaries sixers those are the the type of things that you want to watch right it's 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 why you see the ipl introduce all these little little things where you you want to see more boundaries the power plays all of those things are brought in so that you see more of that so i feel like okay so the I think the the general understanding is that it needs to be fifty plus meters. Um, so I think that for a tournament like this, maybe you have like you have a long side and a short side or something like that, but you certainly shouldn't be having like a seventy meter boundary, right? Yeah. It's is that where it is in the charger? How how how, how I, long? Is I I saw I saw somewhere that it was seventy three straight. Which Oof. sounds crazy to me. Um, I think it was on some kind of commentary, right? Um, yeah. The issue to me is like, like I mentioned before, low-scoring games are great, but.
but like there has to be a balance in things right so if it's a low scoring game then your outfield and your boundaries i mean it wouldn't be low scoring if the boundaries were not big but at least your outfield needs to be good right or if it's a like a really good wicket then you can have longer boundaries where you know even batters who aren't big power hitters might have the chance to get those um, sixes right but when everything is against the batter and you have like maybe in every team one or two players who can clear a boundary then that's a problem right because that entertain like your the women's women's cricket is still or is constantly in this cycle of tra- having to prove themselves as a, an entertainment package right so i don't yeah. think it's doing them any favors by having conditions like this i can understand the pitches to be honest because um they didn't have time to do anything right because the tournament like i said it was it was shifted from bangladesh at, at the last moment but the boundary lengths i think is the only thing that you can really control and once you start the tournament with 65 70 meter boundaries you can't bring it in midway through right so now it's a problem that's going to be there throughout the tournament i just think it, it like i said before if you watch the first day of this world cup if you're a new viewer would you be likely to come back and watch more of it i don't think so um because it just it was not entertaining cricket and we know that low scoring games can be entertaining but this yeah. was just like it, it didn't allow players to even skillful players to kind of get the better of things right like i mean even today like i said before the australian batters didn't have it easy either i mean elise perry stepped out and hit a boundary and then another one just crept through her defenses right with, with like the ball keeping low or whatever so i i don't think it's a good advert for women's cricket or cricket in general because you want it to be entertaining and competitive and i think the 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 saddest thing is that the teams are better than they've ever been before right so yeah. you would see some great cricket if if conditions were better um but i mean now now that we're into it you can only just hope that maybe the better teams will have better games in sharja um what was did you manage to get anywhere near the squad um after the match what was the kind of atmosphere what was the kind of vibes you were getting from the the players and coaches that you saw I didn't actually get close to the whole team but Atapattu was at the the post match press conference and she's <laughs> I just watched the recording actually before we we got online and bef- when when the media manager says okay we are ready for the questions she just lets out a big sigh like <sighs> cuz there are <laughs> there are like I think about 10 Sri Lankan journalists right for this game so yeah. a lot of questions and a lot of criticism I don't think the feeling is that great in the camp. Vishmi Gunaratna was was at the post match last time in the after the last game and you know you can tell that mentally they kind of you have to understand also that that Asia Cup victory was like unprecedented success, right? Yeah, yeah. And coming into this tournament nearly like 99% of people who watch women's cricket was saying that sri lanka will be the number 3 team they might push australia or india out and make it to the i mean it wouldn't be a surprise if they do that they're going to be the number 3 team right and they've never had those kind of expectations pinned on them coming into a tournament they've ne- like they- over the pa- i would say over the past eight world cups them winning one game would have been seen as a success but yeah. here unless they win the remaining two games it's going like people are going to see it as a failure right but without even considering that sri lanka played qualifiers to get to this tournament so technically they are the like in the bottom two seeds yeah but, yeah like, i think the players also would have come with a lot of expectations because it's 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 a new thing to them right and we saw this with the men's team as well winning the asia cup and then going to a world cup um i just i feel for them because it's it's not easy but at the same time you're playing an international sport right so you have to adapt and you have to you know try to be better every game you play 
So also, I think the other thing that's kind of part of this is that because teams are taking them seriously, they're coming with plans, right? Yeah. There's absolutely no way that the, the Australian cricket think tank would have sat there and be like, right, where do you need to bowl to Vishmi to get her out? <laughs> like, Actually, where do you need I to think, bowl to? I think um, in, in, in the pre-match uh, press conference for Australia, Talia McGrath had said, something to the effect of, you know, actually we, we prepared more for Sri Lanka than other teams because we haven't played them since the last World yeah. Cup and we haven't played a bilateral against Sri Lanka since like 2019. So they, you're right, they probably watch a lot of videos and watch like really had individual plans for each of those players. Um, and Australia is Australia, right? It's, it's, there's a reason why they've won everything under the sun. Um, it's because there's they are such professionals. They they know what they're doing. I think even I mean people were talking about the heat so much, and I think Australia had like some special kind of preparation for the heat, which I oh. don't know if many like I don't know if Sri Lanka even thought about it because you ex expect people who come from a tropical nation to kind of adjust, but it is yeah. hot. Like I mean, you can't spend two minutes outside in the afternoon. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. that hot. But was it Beth Mooney who had gone totally mm. red? Mm. Like she had, like, and she had the ice packs on her head. And, yeah. But still, like, she was running singles and twos right throughout that innings, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh, Sri Lanka just seems so far off the pace, don't they? When you, when you talk about Australia doing preparation for the heat and, mm. and yeah. stuff like that. And it's, it's kind of... I mean, my big kind of concerned when I was watching that game and I, I was seeing it peter out into the to the way it did was I w during the Lord's test there was there was people over from SLC obviously because you get set up in the box and, and meet the great the good of, of, of not just English cricket of England um, are, are in there I, I was having a chat with with a with a few of them and one of the big things they kept talking about was that they wanted to invest in women's cricket. They wanted, they thought that, and obviously this was quite fresh or fresher off the back of the Asia Cup win. They wanted to talk about it. Um, they wanted to, to do do more with the women's side. And I was just sitting there watching it and I was thinking, oh gosh, you know at SLC that this performance with the Pakistan performance is not going to go down well. You just worry mm -hmm. We've had a lot of success since they started investing in it, since they started taking women's cricket slightly more seriously. Um, what, two actually, years ago? Actually, years ago. I, would, okay. I, would dis I would kind of disagree. I think with, with Sri Lanka cricket, what I've seen from, from them is that they wait for success and then try to like invest and, you know, whatever. The initial success that Sri Lanka saw was despite like the lack of, lack of support they were getting sure there are little little things like providing the grounds um, a, a net to practice in and all of those things yeah. but those are minimal requirements right you're not going to compete yeah, with Australia yeah. with none of those things and I remember when when match fees were increased yes it's good that it was increased and like the news went out that it's been uh, tripled or you know oh yeah tripled right match tripled, fee tripled yeah which is great when you think about it. Then you realize it went from 250 USD to 750 USD, which is yeah. barely anything when you think about like, you know, the sport globally, right? And I remember there were a lot of discussions at that point and I won't name names, but like people within SLC saying like, let's see them win and then we'll talk about. And that doesn't happen with the men's team, right? Like yeah. it's, it's, it's very, uh, it's a bit frustrating to watch as well because if you if you want to go down that route where if you 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 want to see success before you invest then that's going to take you a long time that's why it's taken so long for sri lanka to come up right but if you want to see them catching up with teams like australia or england then you need to invest before you see the fruits of that right and there has been investment and i think we've credited slc a lot on this part as well uh, so don't uh, ban me or anything but like I'm clipping this and sending it straight up. <laughs> like, to your connections within SLC. Just... <laughs> but um, like that that part's a bit disappointing. And like you would when you talk about like the performance here and how that could affect it, it's like 
what I said about the women's game as a whole, right? You're perpetually trying to prove yourself that we are good enough, we deserve it. And you get like, okay, we win the Asia Cup, we are good enough, we deserve it. Then you lose, let's say Sri Lanka lose four out of four in this World Cup. Then, oh, you know, you don't deserve to get a pay, pay hike now. Um, or like, you know, this is enough for you or whatever. That's not how it works. Like you have to be constantly investing and having faith that if you invest in the right th- resources, that the team will come up. Um, yeah. They. So, so what I was going to say to you is that they, you know, I was just like, when, when's the women's LPL coming along? When's the... And they were open to it, right? They were like, "Yeah, let's do it. Let, let, let's let's get going." The 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 thing is, is I just don't like Sri Lanka too much. Of Sri Lankan cricket just works on vibes, right? So it's kind of like, yeah, the men have won a couple of test matches. We're going to play the London game. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> I'll admit, I, I'm right there at the forefront of the I of mean, the, the vibes. It's so given. funny. Yeah, like people on. talking about it like okay Sri Lanka is going to go to South Africa and just thump them in both tests and then <laughs> come to Sri Lanka and thump Australia in two tests it, the, people talk like three out of four tests is it's going to be a cakewalk yeah um, and but also I think that was you know and again I'm going to put my hand up and say I was right there at the forefront of this as well going, <laughs> yeah there's Women's World Cup it's in, it's in the UAE We'll walk that. Shrunkers have done well. They have been successful as a group in the UAE. Um, this is just another step compared it to 96. It's all a bit of a reality. It's all a bit of a crash down to reality, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> since the Asia Cup win, this team have struggled. Yeah. Right? That That's the reality of it. That island side is not very good in the grand scheme of things, right? That island side didn't qualify for this World Cup. Um, How and- dare you? What? They're a good team. Esther, you can't keep the... Def- Look, right, what people watching or listening to this don't England. know... Hold on, hold on. Firstly, firstly, first things first. If you're watching or listening and you haven't hit the subscribe button, you're absolutely killing us. So hit that subscribe. Please follow us. Tell all your friends about us. Secondly, I need to let you all into a secret from the WhatsApp group. So, obviously, as soon as... the uh, Not as soon as... A few hours after Shrunker played... Bangladesh were playing England. Oh, can you beat that out? I, I try not to say that word in public. <laughs> Th- those snake people were playing England. And in the WhatsApp group, I was saying, we've got to support England. And then obviously England had a bit of a shaky, shaky batting, um, uh, shaky moments in that game. And that's when Estelle revealed herself as not not supported Bangladesh. Uh, the, Deb? Was that was what was I can't even remember what the exact quote was, but I was shocked to my core, absolutely shocked. And now you're coming out defending Ireland as well. What team? What team do you not like us though? I think that might be an easier way around it because in the past you've also told me that you, you had a bit of respect for Australia. So, oh. it's so funny because I work or like I've been I obviously work with you guys and I work with a lot of people who work with England cricket and India cricket. Uh, but they're not always my favorite teams. To, I mean, it's funny with with the. I'll tell you what, right? With those two teams, it's not the teams. Like it's not the players. It's everything around it that's a bit not so great to watch or listen to. But I like the Bangladesh women's team. I think Nigar Sultana is one of the one of my one of one of my favorite like Asian players at the moment. She's very nice as well. Um, who doesn't like an underdog, Mark? You, obviously. Look, look it's it's only a matter of time before those women turn up to Colombo or Candy or Dambola and start snake dancing all over us. So, can you imagine? Oh, can you imagine the anger? Just imagine it's happened already. Just imagine when they do something to Charmory <laughs> or Vishmi or, or Harshita. Can you imagine when they time out Kavisha, right? How you're going to feel? Because that's what they're thinking about doing. But I didn't have a problem with the. I didn't have a problem with the timeout dismissal. I just thought it was really funny. So it could both be funny and immoral. That's possible, and in that in this case, it is. They are not our friends. They are not our friends. Look, Sri Lanka. We know if they were hosting this tournament, Sri Lanka would definitely have won it. And yet, they've contrived the way that they got the tournament moved, yeah, <laughs> because they didn't want us to do it to win. 
Um, I'm joking, of course. Obviously, you know, the political situation is absolutely terrible. And we obviously yeah. support the them having a, a path to peace and democracy. I think we're a pro-democracy show, I assume. Um <laughs> And we need to we need to somehow stop I need to somehow stop talking about this. Um right, two more games. New Zealand have, have won their first match against India. India haven't won at all, but are packed full of talented players. Mm. Uh, Sri Lanka Sri Lanka are not out of the tournament, but you know, but I I think the motto of of Murali Ed and Kumbale Corner, our Indian cricket show, is believe. Um, can we believe? Is is the is it all over, or do you sense that something might be happening? Something stirring. Well, I think even winning both games, it's going to be tough to qualify. But I, but at the same time. If we win both games, then we I think we can come back, you know, satisfied with that result because semi look sem, I know Mark was talking about semi finals and a championship title, right? But realistically, Sri Lanka were always going to find it. Like we've spoken about this before, right? Sri yeah. Sri Lanka could win three games or four games. They could also lose all four games because that group is pretty tight. And if you watched yesterday's game, where New Zealand thumped India, like that is the definition of why people were talking about this group so much, right? Because you've got five teams, Australia, Australia, but they've also not been kind of infallible during the last year or so, right? They've lost to West Indies and South Africa, I mean, dropped a game, but they never drop games, but they've dropped a game in, 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 the, in this year, right? Um, India is strong. They've got a really good team on paper. Um, Pakistan has like not had results go their way, but they've played well during the last couple of months. New Zealand is the only team, to be honest, a lot of people were underestimating and talking about, you know, they're past their best because they, they rely so much on Divine and Bates uh, and Amelia Kerr. So it was always going to be tough to make it to the semi-final. So I think two wins out of four, they can be happy with. But it's not going to be easy against those two teams. I think the key thing to remember is, and I, I, I know uh, Dom wrote about this on the newsletter as well, uh, is that they have beaten these two teams in the last 12 months. So yeah. they know they can beat them. It's not like... With Australia, I always feel like there's a bit of that mental block with the men's team as well, where you have that kind of, it's Australia, right? And this is going to be a tough game and they're not going to give anything away. And you come in with that mentality, right? But they've beaten India and New Zealand in this in the last 12 months. So they know they can do it. So I feel like that will give them a bit of belief. I'll be very interested to see, particularly in Dubai, how things go. Um, but I do think that that first loss to Pakistan probably really hit them mentally. Because if anything, that was the game that, like out of the four, that was the game that they almost would have thought they'd run away with. Definitely should have won, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, Oh, my God. Yeah, so... I don't know. I mean, I want to be positive and think that... Uh, they will win, but it, it's it's going to be a 50-50 thing. I think New Zealand in Sharjah could be interesting because it's, I mean, New Zealand got 160 against India, but, you know, 120 is going to be a winning total um, in Sharjah. So that will be an interesting one. I I wonder how things are going to go. It's it's really tough to call in this group. Um, firstly, obviously, we wish Sri Lanka all the best on this and India and um, New Zealand, all the worst in this. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm still so surprised at the way we played against Pakistan. I, I just, mm. I kind of, I kind of can't fathom it, right? Because it felt even when we were losing to Ireland in Ireland, when it was cold and it wasn't wet, but it was cold and the games were tight. But Pakistan, it just felt like we melted away, and then today it was like we were a puddle. Off ourselves, I'm not quite sure what what's happened um, to the to this team. I think they just need to regroup and go right, girls. 
women. We've got two games to make the most out of this. Mm. Um, what do we do? We're not favourites anymore. We're underdogs. That's what we like to be. Um, let, let's go out and kind of smash it, tear it to bits. I, I just... Another major tournament where Shrunk are coming in with lots of high hopes mm. and another one where quite early on in the tournament, the hopes are all dashed. It's... It's quite disappointing, but yeah, and like on the on the starting the tournament, I I don't think they could have asked for a better fixture to start off either, right? Like I mean, they'd started against Australia, and you know had a tough outing. Then you kind of imagine things would be tough to tough from that point onwards. But like Pakistan is a good fixture. I think the only thing is for me, I'm kind of tired of Sri Lanka playing at a venue for the first time uh, or being one of the first teams to play because it doesn't give them time to assess what's going on there. I don't know if if the result would have been different if they had a couple of days and saw a couple of matches in Sharjah. But like, it's kind of frustrating because you, no matter how much you see going on on the pitch, even today, like with England, we were still discussing about like 118, is it enough? Can Bangladesh chase it, right? But 118 is plenty on that pitch. It's very difficult to get through that mental thing because we're so used to seeing so totals of 150 plus now in the women's game. It's um, it's it's quite kind of it's a real. It's like I suppose this is where we should end it. It's just a real shame for the tournament, isn't it? The low scoring games because, as you say, it's not it's it doesn't make for great television. Mm. Um, what does make for great television and this is a positive we should end on is the atmosphere at the pitch uh, at, yeah. at the stadium when Sri Lanka played seems to be absolutely amazing you can hear the papare you can, you can hear the chanting I'd imagine you could probably wherever you are smell the mutton rolls like it seems absolutely great is it? is it great? is it as good as I think it is? actually it's really surprisingly the stadium is nowhere near full Okay, I have yeah. to say that it's nowhere near full. It's not even 50%. But like the crowd is really loud and that's been good to see. I think uh, someone from the Sri Lanka support staff was telling me at the warm-up that like Sri Lanka fans had wanted to come and watch the warm-up games as well, right? Yeah. And unfortunately, the ICC wasn't able to kind of facilitate that. But like, can you imagine that happening like two years ago or three years ago or five years ago for Sri Lanka? Can I, can I hold it? Hold on, hold on. Can I, I? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say yes. So I'll tell you why, right? Everywhere you go in the world, everywhere Sri Lanka go, men's or women's, and even like the youth teams as well, Sri Lanka fans turn up, right? We're everywhere. You can't stop us. I it's don't, like, I, I, if, I don't if, know if you can say that for the women's play, team, though. Right? Unless it's like you're playing in Sydney or. You know, like a like a area where there are a lot of Sri Lankans living in. You don't so, really so in, in, see those big crowds. In Ireland, there is no like cricket. Basically, doesn't exist, right? I don't know how. But that's they, like, like after the team got successful, right? Like two yeah, years ago, but, if they got to Ireland. But but the thing is about about the what surprised me most about the island thing was and the that number of fans that turned up is that there's basically no Sri Lankans living there. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> There's like three million people live in Ireland. Or I think maybe five million people live in Ireland in total. There's barely any shrunkers live there anyway. And then, like, I know there's maybe about forty or fifty shrunkers have turned up, but that's like quite a significant number of people. With the, mm. with the, actually no, it wasn't forty or fifty. It was quite a few. There was in the hundreds, yeah. right? I and there was it was basically like. In terms of the crowd, the noise that was being made, it was like a home game for Shrunker, right? Mm. Um, they are Shrunkers all around the world. There's people who love this team all around the world. It keeps me motivated to keep, you know, morally <laughs> end going as well. It makes me feel not so lonely that I'm sitting there on the district line coming home. Sorry, Jubilee Line. I never take district line. Coming home, thinking about, you know, can how, how are Shrunker going to beat Pakistan today or how are they going to beat New Zealand today? Knowing that I'm not the only person in the whole world thinking that as well. Everyone who's got to this far into this show is thinking that as well. And I love it that everywhere we go in the world, because the other thing is, is that as, as the way we celebrate and support our team is totally unique. I mean, we must be, I think we're the only team in cricket 
that has a whole genre of music that basically only exists for cricket games, right? Uh, um, it's a totally unique fandom and culture around it. And I, I'm so, so amazed and happy that, A, I was born into it and get to 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 celebrate it and, and witness all of it, and B, that we go and express ourselves like the way we do. And I think that, thus far, Estelle, is the only major good <laughs> positive point to take away from yeah. our exploits at the Women's World Cup this far. Um, and I think we should maybe leave it there, unless mm-hmm. unless there's something that needs to be said and, and that I forgot to say. Oh, uh, <laughs> Dom wanted us to talk about Anushka Sanji when he's keeping... <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> um, we haven't really just... discussed anything about the games, have we? <laughs> no, we, no, we haven't. This is t- this basically becoming a music, a music and mutton roll show at this point. Uh, um, yeah, the keeping's been absolutely superb. She's got she's broke she broke a record against Pakistan, didn't she? Yeah, and I thought she looked really good with the bat today as well. I yeah, actually think yeah. they, apart from Chamari and Vishmi, they batted better today. Uh, there was at least some intent to score. I thought that was what was lacking against Pakistan. It was almost as if they expected to eventually get to the total, right? Like, yeah. they didn't kind of realize that the rate was going up and you can't score quickly. Whereas today, there was that intent to run hard. There was the intent to score quickly. The 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 outfield was, I think, marginally quicker. Um, yeah. So it was a, a bit easier. And Anushka looked like by far the best batter for Sri Lanka, like the most comfortable out there. Yeah, actually, weirdly, when she was batting, I was thinking about, there's been a few times now in the last, kind of, from from the Asian Cup, but maybe even just before that, I can't remember, where she's starting to actually be much more mm. consistent with the bat than she used to be. Um, she broke her, her uh, record for stumpings against uh, Pakistan. And as I say, she had the record previously. I wonder if she's possibly actually a she's underrated in in amongst us because we don't talk about her enough. I don't think, and actually, I wonder if she's just underrated in world cricket in general because she's two matches in in a, in a tournament where not many shrunken players, especially with the bat, have covered themselves with glory. She's definitely been our best player, I'd say. Yeah, with her, I think as a keeper pure keeper she's probably like among the top three in world cricket right now right like you've got like possibly amy jones um ahead of her but i mean i'm not talking about wicket keeper batters because on the batting side you've got like Rishal ghost you've got alisa healy you've got a lot of good like wicket keeper batters but as a pure keeper i think she's one of the best because you you hardly ever notice it like you don't like you said we don't talk about her but she's i think clean with her keeping, and she keeps up to the quick. I mean, it's not like Udeshika Prabodhini is not quick, but yeah. she does keep up to her. Um, and she does a really good job against the spinners as well. The batting has come a long way. I think po- probably if you asked me 18 months ago, I would have said that she should be dropped because she, I think, didn't even have like a 30 plus score over the last five yeah. years, something yeah. like that. Uh, but she's come a long way. I think it's with, with these players. I'm sorry I'm saying I think so much, but uh, with these players, it's a lot like a lot of it's mental, right? And you can see it in players like Harshita and Kavisha, the way they play, how they've it's something's flipped a switch in them and given them that confidence. With Anushka, I think it's the same thing. It's that something has changed about the way she sees her own batting. And that's what's allowing her to make runs now. Do we want to credit the coaching staff for that? Or do we think there's... I think it. it's probably... I mean, the players certainly credit coaching staff about creating that environment of positivity, right? Um, it, it, it's. I've actually been really interested to see how things go when you're not doing well because they've been doing well yeah. so far. And yeah. then if they have a bad World Cup, what, what's the you know camp going to be like um so that will be interesting to see post the world cup but a lot of those players credit that positive atmosphere that uh Ratnayaka has created within the team for their success so i mean if the players say there there must be something different inside right 
Yeah, absolutely. The other thing I did, I was trying to figure out, I, I keep meaning to ask this to you on WhatsApp, but I keep also forgetting. Once this tournament's over, they haven't got anything penciled in at all. Yeah, so they're done with all their women's championship fixtures, right? Yeah. And we have to wait until 2025 for the like the next cycle to come around. Um, I think they're going to New Zealand in February of next year. So they don't have any cricket after this, like nothing. Um, though, as as I said, I mean, SLC, from what they were telling, from what I've heard is they're quite keen to keep them going. I also, mm-hmm. you know, the, 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 the kind of sad thing is, is if this tournament doesn't kind of light, and I mean, not just from a shrunken perspective, but from a kind of wider TV audience perspective, is that, you know, part of the reason why people are interested in women's cricket is because there's money to be made in it from a media mm-hmm. perspective. And, and this kind of feels like this could maybe stall the... It will get to where it needs to get to, but this might push it back slightly, uh, which isn't great. But hopefully... I, I, mean, ju- I just if India win the World Cup, then we can we can we don't need to worry about viewership or anything. That, yeah, that that's true. And and Sri Lanka haven't had a series against India in quite a while, actually. Mm. So we're probably overdue them coming to us or us going to them, because um, I I believe um, the BCCI quite enjoy fixtures against Sri Lanka. So I by believe I mean I just look at how, at how frequently that happens with the men's side. It happens what every eighteen months, every year. Um, and I suspect it will happen again in 2025. So um, hopefully we'll, we can play more bilateral series with the women's and get back to where we want to get to. On commentary, you talked about how the under-19s mm. team exists now. Um, and, you know, th- th- it looks to me like there might be a bit of a rebuild coming out of the back of this tournament because I think we've got the oldest team. We've got the oldest squad, right? It's the average player is 32. Oh, um, and that's balanced out by the fact that there's a 15 year old in the squad, would, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you take her, if you take her out of it, who's literally less than half what the average is, because um, <laughs> you imagine um, how, how I think they have nine above the age of 30, and yeah. probably like six or seven above the age of 34. The experience in the squad is quite phenomenal, though, right? Because uh, uh, Kavisha has played. Is this her third? World Cup, and she's like twenty seven. Is she twenty seven? No, she's not that old. Kavisha, Kavisha's twenty three. Twenty. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go I think Go I, I think Harshita is. I think Harshita is twenty twenty six or something. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I mean, Vishmi is nineteen, and she's played two World Cups already. Yeah, it's quite phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah, it's um, it's it's. it's and the, it's they're blooding them young. I think that's yeah. that's the reason for it. So you might see some of those under nineteen players get an opportunity in T Twenty cricket in the near future. Um, right, Estelle, should we leave it there yes, now that yeah. we have discussed everything? I, t- I can't think of anything else that uh, we can say other than if you're a shrunken player listening to this, we've just got one word for you: win. Right, let's leave it there. Um, We'll be back in the next few days. There's also the the West Indies are on their way to Sri Lanka for a, a men's series as well. We, we, we've got loads of ideas for what we might do for the, for that tournament. Estelle's staying in the UAE uh, till the final, right? Is that is yeah, that correct? Yeah, because like it's it's bad luck to bo- book your tickets um, after the group stage because you never know what will happen, right? <laughs> Maybe that's and kind I mean, of bad. Australia not really finally is, is, is good enough for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. Now we're definitely going to end it with that kind of <laughs> behaviour. Right. See you all later. Thanks for listening and watching. And if you haven't subscribed, do so now. Leave us your comments. See you soon. Bye.